ओके गाइज वेलकम टू इंजीनियर सी गेव मी काइंडली सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल इफ़ यू आर हेयर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस फोटीन सेवेंटी टू प्रॉब्लम फ्राम हिबलर डायनामिक्स एंड द प्रॉब्लम से इज दैट द रोलर कोस्टर कार हैज़ अ मास ऑफ सेवन हंड्रेड के जी इंक्लूडिंग इट्स पैसेंजर इफ इट स्टार्ट फ्राम द टॉप ऑफ द हिल ए विद स्पीड वी ए थ्री मीटर पर सेकेंड सो हेयर दिलास्ट एट ए इज थ्री मीटर पर सेकेंड we are required to determine the minimum height h of the hill crust so that the car travels around the inside loops without leaving the track so we have to find this h this h is required and further it is said that neglect friction and the mass of the wheels and the size of the car what is the normal reaction on the car when the car is at p and when it is at c so here uh, we have one important term that without leaving the track so it is said that to determine the minimum height h of the hill crust so that the car travels around the inside loops without leaving the track so when the car will leave the track at that particular instant the normal force of the track on the car will be equal to zero so that will give us the minimum condition so now uh, let's say if i consider the general case if the car is at point v or at point c so if we consider the free body diagram let's say that the car is uh, let's say if this is the car and let's say this is either at point v or c this this free body diagram applies to both the cases at point b and at point c we will have the same free body diagram so let's say that the car is somewhere here so uh, the this will be the the tangential direction this will be the tangential direction and the normal will be the normal direction will be towards the center of the track so this is the normal direction and the weight of the car is going to act downward let me represent that weight so this is the weight and the track is going to apply the normal force on this as well so this is the normal force and this is the weight and the and it will have the velocity as well so the velocity will be in the tangential direction so now if we consider this free body diagram and if we apply the summation of forces along the normal direction so that will be equal to m a n and as we can see that the n is acting in the positive direction and weight is acting in the positive n direction so i will write plus n plus weight and weight is uh, 700 times g so i will write this is 700 multiplied by g which is 9.81 and this is equal to the mass times acceleration so mass is 700 and acceleration when we consider the normal and tangential coordinate system so the a n is always equal to v square divided by rho the radius of curvature so this is the general equation now uh, if we want to find the minimum velocity that the car need to have uh, at point b so what we will do is that we will equate n equals to 0 since that will be the minimum velocity and we are required to determine the minimum height of the hill crest so that the car travels around the inside loop without leaving the track so we will have when it will just leave the track that will be the minimum velocity at that particular instant so now when n is equal to 0 we are uh, we are left with that this equation this is 700 into 9.81 equals to 700 v square divided by rho so 700 will cancel out and we are left with if i just simplify this equation so v square is equal to 9.81 times rho 9.81 times rho so now we got this equation from that uh, this general equation the which applies to both point b and point c so now if you want to find the velocity the minimum velocity at point b so if we want to find the minimum velocity at point b then at point b the velocity will be equal to vb and at point b we are given that the radius of curvature is half the height this is 7.5 so radius of curvature at point b is 7.5 so if i put both of both of these values in this equation so we will get that we b square will be equal to 9.81 into 7.5 
So this will give us VB square. So 9.81 into 9.81 into 7.5. So this is 73.575. So VB square is 73.575. And if I take the square root of this answer, so that will give us the minimum velocity. So the VB is 8.577. VB is 8.577 meter per second and this is the velocity when we have assumed that n is equal to 0 right so when n is equal to 0 we b is equal to this so this is that minimum velocity the car need to have to to cross this loop b similarly if you want to find that minimum velocity at point c so at c Again, if we uh, put n equals to 0 in this equation, so ultimately we will have this equation and at c the velocity will be equal to vc and rho c is given which is 5, this is 5. So now if I put in, in this equation, so the vc square is equal to 9.81 into rho c, so rho c is 5, so this will give us vc square 9.81 into 5. This is 49.05 and if we write the units of this, so this is meter square per second square, this is meter square per second square since this is the velocity square and similarly if, if I take the square root then that will be the minimum velocity. So the, if I take the square root of that answer, so this is 7, 7.004, 7 so approximately this is 7 meter per second. So the minimum velocity the car need to have uh, to cross this loop C is 7 meter per second and we got this velocity when we have assumed that n is equal to 0. Now we are required to find this height h. So if I apply the uh, law of conservation of energy between point A and B. So the law of conservation between point A and B is we can write that the kinetic energy of the car at point A plus uh, the gravitational potential energy or the potential energies at point A equals to the kinetic energy at point B plus the gravitational potential energy at point B. So we need to define our datum line. So let's say that this is my datum line for this is my datum line for the uh, potential energies. So it, at point A the velocity is given so we can write that uh, the kinetic energy is 1 divided by 2, mass is 700 and the velocity at A is given which is 3 meter per second this is given so that will be 3 square. Similarly um, there is only weight involved in this particular case there is no spring so we have only the gravitational potential energy. And from this datum, the car have uh, uh, gravitational potential energy equals to mgh. That is the weight times the change in the vertical position from the datum line, right? So weight times h. So weight is m mass times g, which is 9.81 times the height. And that will be equal to the kinetic energy of the car at point B. So the kinetic energy of the car at point B is 1 divided by 2 mass and mass is 700 times Vb square and plus the gravitational potential energy of the car at B. So again that will be weight times h from the datum. So weight is again 700 into 9.81 and at point B the height from the datum or the distance from the datum is 15. So I will multiply this with 15. So if I divide this whole equation by 700, so this will cancel out, this will cancel out, this will cancel out. So we will have this equation like this. Now in this equation, if I put that minimum value of Vb, which we have obtained while assuming that n is equal to 0. So this is that minimum velocity which is required. So this will give us that minimum height, right, to achieve that uh, minimum velocity at point B. So this is, we can write this as uh, 3 square is 9, 9 divided by 2 is 
4.5 plus 9.81 into h and this is uh, 0 0.5 into vb square so this is vb square so this is 73.575 plus uh, 9.81 into 15 and if i bring this 4.5 to the other side so it will become negative so let me calculate that first so 0 0.5 into 73.575 plus 9.81 into 15 and minus 4.5 so this is 179.4375 let me write that as uh, 9.81 h equals to 179.4375 and now if i divide that answer by 9.81 then we will be able to find that minimum height h so this answer divided by 9.81 so this gives us the minimum height which is required is 18.29 this is 18.29 meters so when this point a is at a height of 18.29 meters the car will have a velocity vb equals to 8.577 meters when it is passing through that point b now when we have determined this height h we have to make sure that whether the car is uh, having that same velocity uh, minimum velocity or not so if if the car is moving with some other uh, velocity greater than or less than this we see that minimum we see so we have to find uh, the normal force at that point c if if the car uh, is moving with 7 meter per second velocity then the normal force at point c will be equals to 0 so we have to find that condition as well so now we have to apply the law of conservation of energy between uh, point a and c so now if we apply the uh, law of conservation of energy between point a and c so we have to write that the kinetic energy at point a plus the gravitational potential energy at point a equals to the kinetic energy at point c plus the gravitational potential energy at point c so the kinetic energy at point A is 1 divided by 2, mass is 700 and we A is 3, this is 3 square plus uh, the gravitational potential energy is weight times this delta Y which is H. So weight is 700 into 9.81 into H. Now H is known which is 18.29, so multiply by 18.29. And this will be equal to 1 divided by 2 mass 700 and Vc square. This is the kinetic energy at point C plus the gravitational potential energy at point C if we consider the same datum line. So that will be again the weight times this height. So weight is 700 into 9.81 into 10. So again if we divide this whole equation by 700, so this 700 will cancel out and we will have this this equation like this and now if i bring this term to the other side of equation so we will have this is uh, again uh, 3 square is 9 divided by 2 so this is 4.5 plus 9.81 into 18.29 and this term on the other side will become negative so that will be 9.81 into 10 so this will be equal to uh, 0 0.5 vc square so now let's calculate that left hand side of the equation that is 4.5 plus 9.81 into 18.29 minus 9.81 into 10 so this gives us 85.8249 and if i divide this uh, left hand side of equation by 0.5 so we will get vc square so answer divided by 0 0.5 so vc square is 171.6498 and if i take the square root we will be able to find vc so the square root of that answer is 13.10 so 13. 
1.10 meter per second. So this we see is when the height is 18.29, so the car will um, have that minimum velocity at point B and when it will uh, pass through this loop B, so it will attain some more velocity and it will have the velocity we see equals 13.10. So this velocity is greater than that minimum velocity which we have determined by assuming that the normal force is equal to 0. So that is 7 meter per second, so it is greater than 7 meter per second. So now if the velocity at point C is greater than that minimum, so n is not equal to 0 at that point C. So we have to determine that since in the problem we are required to find the normal reaction on the car when the car is at B and at C. So if the car is moving with that minimum velocity at B, n is equal to 0 at B. So we can write that n B is equal to 0, but n C is not equal to 0, we have to determine it. So we have to use that equation. We have to use this equation. So now we can write that equation. So we will have n C plus 700 into 9.81 equals to 700. And this will be, if we want to find NC, then we will have VC squared divided by rho C in that equation, in this equation. So if I bring this term to the other side, so it will become negative. So this will be minus 700 into 9.81. And this will give us NC if we put VC, but we will put this VC, right? So this and VC square is 171. So I need to put that value. This is 171.6498 divided by rho c and rho c is 5 meters which is given so this is 5. So now we can find n c for this much velocity. This is 700 into 171.6498 divided by 5 minus 700 into 9.81. So this gives us NC equals to 17,164, 17,164 newtons or we can say that this is 17.164 uh, kilonewton. So NB is equal to 0 and NC is equal to 17.164 kilonewton and the velocity at point B is at 8.577 meter per second and the velocity at point C is 13.10 meter per second.